Canon R5 was great. It was awesome. It's a great camera, except for one little deal breaker. All I want is the perfect camera. That's not my intro. Hey guys, Omar here and welcome. If you're new here, I don't usually talk Canon on this channel, which is ironic since I was a Canon shooter like forever. And I started my channel like filming with a Canon 5D Mark IV. And most of my event work, I would say the majority of, the majority of my event work was shot with a Canon. And then I moved to Sony and then I've been dabbling with Nikon and I've just recently been testing the Canon R5. And in this video, I wanted to share my final thoughts on it. Now, first of all, no camera is perfect. All I want is the perfect camera. I know that's what you want. However, most cameras have a little shortcoming, like a micro HDMI cable. Come on, Canon. Ugh. At least a mini, a mini HDMI cable. <laughs> most cameras have like shortcomings, but it's most things that you can live with or that you have a workaround for. But after testing the Canon R5, for me personally, it didn't work out. So let's get to that. But before we get to that, no, there isn't a sponsor. So hit that like and subscribe. You know, you didn't have to sit through a commercial. <laughs> Here's the good stuff. First of all, the camera was excellent at handling. It had a wonderful grip. The autofocus was absolutely insane on this camera, probably better than, maybe? than my Sony A9 that I had for a while. I think better definitely than the Sony a7 III, which is crazy to say because those cameras were incredible. But I felt that Canon R5 was just spot on with autofocus going from single to eye, just incredible. The controls, so great, so intuitive, so fantastic. It has three dials. I wish most cameras would have three dials for shutter, aperture, ISO, where you can just use physical dials to change all three, as opposed to holding down a button and eh. Screen was beautiful. EVF, probably one of the best I've ever used, which was great. The sensor has dust protection, which is something that should be in all mirrorless cameras. <laughs> the camera's customizable. The buttons are great. On-off switch is a little, you know, it's one of those like you can live with things. I'm so used to having the on-off switch on the shutter. I think most of us are, like every camera ever made. <laughs> and Canon decided to put it way to the left over there, which, you know, I like to control every, everything usually with one hand, where you can kind of grab the camera and be turning it on as you grab the camera, that kind of thing. But uh, this time it was like, it was a two hand to turn on a camera, which is like, I know it seems dumb, <laughs> However, it's just these little things start to annoy you. Wait, we're still talking positive. <laughs> that was one, that was an example of something you can live with. Video was fantastic. I'm not a videographer, but I think most video, most reviews about this camera were uh, about video because 8K video, the colors were gorgeous, you know, out of the standard film profile, Canon lager, all that great stuff. It looked fantastic. The video, I shot one video with it for YouTube. Um, I would say the one negative is um, it has a record limit and this Sony A7C does not have a record limit. So I could run my podcast off this A7C, which runs over an hour. It's not a deal breaker. See that one, that one's not a deal breaker. That's something you could live with. Just stop it and hit record again. I mean, come on. And I love that the adapter worked so well with the Canon R5. With the Nikon Z system, the older lenses work fine. I use them for my event work. I use them for portrait shoots, but they sometimes, uh, they fall asleep sometimes, you know, sometimes they don't want to focus as fast. But all the um, EF lenses that I used on the Canon R5 were fantastic. I know what you're saying, get to the deal breaker. Okay, deal breakers. Now, when we're talking deal breakers, we're talking really deal breakers for me. It might not be deal breaker, you might love the micro HDMI cable, because you're weird like that. However, I would say some semi-deal breakers, some that you have to consider. The first one is shooting with this camera. I was kind of shocked for a $4,000 camera that the dynamic range wasn't as great as what I was expecting. I've been using Nikon Z7, Z6 II, I've been testing those cameras and I've uh, been using Sony cameras for a long time. So when I tried the R5, I expected the same level of dynamic range. And what I found it, uh, what I found, what I found was that if 
I overexposed the brights too much, it was hard to recover them. You really have to be good at nailing your exposure, especially if your flash at an event just happens to go nuts. I mentioned the micro HDMI as a joke, but that's a semi deal breaker for you video shooters out there. Those little cables are finicky. They break, the cables break. Um, full HDMI is incredible, but mini HDMI, if, if you're really doing video, just get a camera with a mini HDMI if you're going to be using an external monitor or external recorder. Another semi deal breaker, but not a deal breaker, is battery life was terrible on this camera. Um, I felt like I closed the screen and used the EVF, kind of used it as a DSLR. It was fine, but of course these batteries have to run a screen on the back, an EVF, a processor, you know. The battery life is not gonna be as great as a DSLR, of course, but coming from Sony, the Sony Z battery they created is just incredible. I would only use one battery and a half for an entire event night. And um, with the Canon, it's like three, you're into the third battery and like you're sweating a little bit. Which brings us to the main deal breaker that I found. And I really wanted to love this camera because I love Canon. You know, I just recently went out and shot the Canon 5D Mark III. I bought a used Canon 5D Mark II because I had awesome nostalgia for those colors and the files and the filmic quality of the images. The biggest deal breaker was the sensor on this camera for me. It just didn't have, I wanna say the film stock that I needed. There was a great video by Cam Mackey. He was doing, he actually uses the Canon R5. And he said that he tried Sony, he tried Fujifilm, but the R5 resonated with him because he started to think of sensors as almost like film stocks where you're not killing yourself trying to figure out what works for you skin tone wise and color wise from the file that the camera raw is giving you or the raw processor you're using the software so for cam the r5 worked as his film stock and when i dug a little deeper it turns out that a lot of people maybe coming from other older canons even the rp the eos r which by the way i found those sensors to be kind of on par or you know like along the lineage of the 5D series, I feel like the R5 is a completely different beast as far as the raw processors haven't really figured out how to get the colors out of camera. And looking over like a lot of posts and comments from the last few years, people have been trying to figure out how to get the best colors, a lot of workarounds to get the skin tones either Canon-like, which really isn't like accurate skin tones. Um, because I think this camera shifts more to the magenta where maybe older Canons were more orange, the skin, they were wrong. They absolutely were wrong colors, but there was something about that film stock, that flavor. And I found this camera, as soon as I brought the images in, I could not massage the files for what I wanted. Now, in contrast, the Nikon Z6 II, when I bring those images into Lightroom and I just hit the standard profile, the skin tones are exactly what I want. I have painterly soft, great portraits from just a few sliders. For me personally, I wish Canon and the other companies would make a few cameras that had some of the flavor or profiles of the old sensors. You know, I don't know if that's gonna be something in the future, but how cool would it be if there was a cheaper mirrorless camera, kind of like the RP, that had a 5D Mark II-ish sensor in there. I'm talking colors. We can improve the dynamic range of those older cameras, but it would be cool if they brought out some of the older sensors for those Canon lovers, those original Canon lovers. So for me, that was the biggest deal breaker is that I really couldn't figure out how to get what I wanted, where with the Nikon Z6 II, it was like, yeah, it's done. All right, I'll see you next time. <laughs>